All right, so now we're going to move on to techniques for deciding convergence of integrals that doesn't necessarily involve evaluating them, right? Um, the main tool is, is comparison. So the idea is if you've got an unknown integral, you want to figure out how to compare it to one where you do know what's going on, right? And, and so you, the key is to have sort of an inequality like this, right? So we have the assumption here is that f of x is always less than or equal to g of x, right? Now, if g of x is a function where you happen to know that the integral for g of x converges, and f of x is always smaller than g of x, right? Um, then essentially via like a squeeze theorem type argument, um, if this one converges, if this value is finite, well, this value has to be somewhere between zero and the integral for g of x, so it must also be finite, right? So it has to also converge. Um, on the other hand, um, if this integral is divergent, well, the integral for g of x has to be even bigger than this one. If this one is already infinite, then that one has to be infinite too, okay? Um, so that's the essential idea, is, is to use known integrals to decide on convergence of unknown ones. Um, so for something like this, um, we, we can't find an antiderivative for e to the minus x squared, right? This is not um, an, a function that has an antiderivative in terms of elementary functions. Um, so how do you proceed? Well, there, there are a couple of options. Um, the, the textbook gives one suggestion. So the textbook um, says that you can show that e to the minus x squared is always less than or equal to 1 over x squared for x bigger than or equal to 1. And we know that the integral for 1 over x squared converges. It's p series with p bigger than 1, or p, sorry, um, you know, it's a p function, power function with p bigger than 1. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're not at series yet. Um, but we, we know that this, this integral converges by the p-test. This one is smaller, so that one must also converge by comparison. Um, another, another comparison that we could make, uh, we could say this. We could say for x bigger than 1, it's true that x squared will be bigger than x. So that means um, minus x squared is less than minus x. And since the exponential function is an increasing function, that means that e to the minus x squared right, will always be less than e to the minus x. Okay. And if we could establish convergence of the integral for e to the minus x, we'd be in business. Um, but we know that for the integral from, say, 1 to b of e to the minus x dx, right, this is going to be minus e to the minus x from 1 to b. Okay, so it's going to be um, e minus e to the minus b. And if we take the limit as b goes to infinity, e to the minus b is going to go to zero, right? So this integral converges, e to the minus x squared is smaller than e to the minus x, so that integral should converge as well. So that's, that's another approach that you could take. Um, how about this one here? Square root of x cubed minus x, how do we tackle that? Um, well, frequently what we can do is we can say this. We can say that um, x cubed minus x is got to be smaller than simply x cubed, right? Um, but for, and, and, and also, you know, it's going to be positive, right? x is bigger than 3, so we're, we're fine there. Um, and that means that 1 over x cubed is less than, ah, here's the trouble. Um, that inequality goes the wrong way, right? So we, we would like to have that work out. It doesn't quite point in the direction we want, right? We, we want to kind of make a comparison here with 
x cubed, or, or you know, x to the 3 over 2. That's the p series. We can make that work. Um, OK, so that doesn't work. So what else, what else can we try? Um, well, the other thing that we can do if this inequality doesn't work the right way um, is we can play around a little bit, and we can try to sort of simplify. And we can say, OK, um, so that's no good. I want something going the other way. So I want, I want x cubed minus x to be on this side of things. OK. Well, I could say this. Um, is that going to be true? Well, let's see. Um, x is bigger than 3, bigger than or equal to 3, right? So x cubed over 2, I mean, that's 27 over 2. That's bigger than, bigger than 3, right? Um, so subtracting x cubed over 2, right, I'm subtracting more there than when I subtract x, right? OK, so that gives me a smaller value. Uh, but of course, this is just, this is just x cubed over 2, OK? And now when I take reciprocals, I get 1 over x cubed minus x is smaller than 2 over x cubed. Okay. Now, that might be the comparison that gets the job done for us, because if we look at the integral from 3 to infinity for 1 over the square root of well, so I guess we should do this, right? Um, that's less than that. So then the square root of that will be less than the square root of that. So we should do root 2 square root of x cubed. OK, so this is root 2, 3 to infinity, 1 over x cubed. Um, Oh, sorry, that's x to the minus 3 over 2. Yeah, OK. Um, so we're still OK. So this is still, it's still p series, right? So this is of the form 1 over x to the p, where p is 3 over 2, which is bigger than 1. So it converges, right? So it's convergent p series. Uh, and since we know that this is a convergent p-series and these terms are smaller than this convergent one, we know that this integral converges as well. Right? Now, this was really finicky and, and kind of tricky, and it's a bit of a mess. Right? We'd like a slightly better means of doing this one. And it turns out there's, there's a refinement that we can make to the direct comparison test that, that kind of cleans this up a little bit for us so we don't have to do this fiddling around. Um, We'll discuss that refinement in the next video.